Hi, my name is Ria Chervu. I'm an AI software architect and generative AI evangelist at Intel Corporation. Today, I'm excited to show you a demo of running stable diffusion and advanced transformer models using OpenVINO and the Red Hat OpenShift platform. We're going to start to run these models on Intel CPUs and GPUs. And together, as part of this demo, we're going to learn how to accelerate and deploy generative AI on Intel hardware for your use cases. Generative AI is revolutionizing the creation of high quality content, but adopting Gen AI can be difficult with high inference time and poor customer experience as key pain points. As developers, we often ask ourselves whether we need to use powerful machines such as servers or a data center, or if we can port our workloads to an edge device with optimized models. What if we had a third option though, that allows us to switch between the cloud and edge for running these kinds of models? With this kind of paradigm, we would be able to leverage the unique strengths of the edge, such as real-time data processing, privacy of data stored locally, and cost efficiency, and combine them with the benefits of the cloud, including the limitless compute on demand. Now, this paradigm of combining the strengths of both the edge and the cloud, or hybrid AI, allows us to process an AI workload using available or targeted system resources and accelerators on the edge or in the cloud. But how do we go about achieving this? In this demo, we'll present OpenVINO, an open source toolkit for AI inference that allows you to convert models from different frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch into an intermediate representation or IR format. This IR format can then be optimized and deployed with performance improvements on a wide variety of hardware, including CPUs, such as Intel Xeon and Core, GPUs, such as the ARC 770 and Intel Flex series, NPUs, and FPGAs as well. Now in particular, as part of this demo, we'll cover how OpenVINO can help accelerate Gen AI on a variety of different domains, including reducing your model size, reducing the memory footprint of the model, and enabling flexibility for deployment on CPUs and GPUs. In this demo, we're going to be showing Stable Diffusion version 2.1 and Llama 2.0 as key examples. We'll also be demonstrating OpenVINO on the Red Hat OpenShift platform, an open source machine learning platform with tools for optimizing the complete lifecycle of AI workflows on the cloud. Red Hat OpenShift data science enables developers to train, serve, monitor, and manage the lifecycle of AI and machine learning models and applications. It comes with a variety of benefits, including less time managing AI infrastructure, tested AI ML tooling, and support for Intel certified operators and plugins, as we'll explore in just a moment. Let's now take a look at two popular models that are out there, Stable Diffusion and Llama 2.0. We're going to take a look at how to take advantage of the generative AI and edge deployment capabilities that are provided by OpenVINO, including its support through the Optimum Intel package, as well as OpenVINO runtime APIs that we can use to accelerate generative AI. As part of this demo, we'll also take a look at how to use Intel CPU and GPU accelerators as part of the OpenShift platform, including how to use certified OpenVINO operators in order to be able to perform accelerated generative AI inference on Intel hardware. Let's dive in. In this demo, we'll be running our notebooks for Stable Diffusion and Llama 2.0 directly within a Red Hat OpenShift cluster, as we talked about previously. Let's start by looking at a brief look at the OpenShift interface by navigating over to the installed operators as part of our cluster. Here we can navigate over to the Intel device operator plugin. As part of this demo setup, I have a GPU plugin that is using a Flex 170 GPU. You can identify more details around this by going ahead and clicking on the Intel GPU device plugin option and also investigating the YAML further to get more information about this particular operator. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and return to our notebook so we can dive in here. I'm going to start off with a notebook on Stable Diffusion 2.1 with OpenVINO. You can access the Jupyter Notebooks interface by navigating over to the networking menu and clicking on routes and then navigating over to the roads dashboard to get the link for that particular Jupyter Notebook instance. Now, here I've already started my notebook server with the Stable Diffusion version 2.1 notebook ready to go. I chose the extra large CPU option with 30 GPUs and added in the gpu.intel.com resource so that within an OpenVINO notebook, I can easily switch between running a model on a CPU or a GPU, as we'll explore in just a moment. Now with the remarkable results that Stable Diffusion can offer, its efficiency can be compromised when run on resource-constrained hardware. 
Let's navigate over to the OpenVINO Notebooks repository, which contains a number of different demos, including the ones that we'll be talking about in this video, as part of notebooks that are easy to understand. Let's go ahead to the README and take a look at the Stable Diffusion pipeline as an example. Now with Stable Diffusion and the way that we handle it with OpenVINO, we take as input a text prompt and a negative prompt and an input seed, which are used to be able to guide the image generation. Then we need to execute our text encoder to create a condition to generate an image from a text prompt. Next, we have our UNET model for step-by-step -step denoising of the latent image representation. And finally, we have our autoencoder for decoding our latent space to an image. Now in Stable Diffusion, the UNET model is computationally the most expensive to run. Traditional model optimization methods like post-training 8-bit quantization don't typically work for this model. Let's navigate back over to the Jupyter Notebook and figure out how OpenVINO can help. OpenVINO can help optimize each of these three models, reducing their size and footprint through quantization to FP16 from FP32. It only takes five lines of code to achieve quantization to FP16 from FP32. Let's take a look at how to do this using Hugging Face Optimum, a set of APIs from Intel and Hugging Face using OpenVINO in the backend. Now, as part of this demo, we're going to start off by showing you the full precision model in CPU with the traditional stable diffusion pipeline. In just a couple lines of code, I can go ahead and load in the original model and then run inference on it to obtain image generation. But we're seeing that the runtime is definitely not constrained to a couple of seconds. If I navigate over to the optimizations that OpenVINO is providing on the different components of the stable diffusion pipeline, let's take a look at the results of using the full precision model in the CPU. We can see with the runtime results that the results are slightly better, but let's take a look at what we can do if we convert over to our GPU and go ahead and compile and run inference of our model. Now with our Flex170 discrete GPU, with the FP32 precision, we're able to directly go ahead and run the OpenVINO pipe command for execution. Due to some of the newer features as part of the OpenVINO latest release, you don't need to explicitly convert your model to FP16 for running the inference on GPU. OpenVINO is automatically handling that for you in the backend, allowing you to easily transfer between CPU and GPU and handle precisions accordingly. As we can see with the results of the OV pipe command here and executing our image generation, it only takes less than two seconds on the discrete GPU to generate images, which allows for the efficient deployment and execution of stable diffusion and related models in the field of text image generation as a game changer. Now you can use OpenVINO remotely to develop and deploy models on OpenShift in a production environment, or you can just install OpenVINO locally to develop on your own machine. Let's switch over to the ARC 770 Edge device and take a look at what that looks like. Now that I've switched over to an ARC 770 Intel GPU that I have locally, you can see how we can run the same notebook on the Edge. Here I can see the devices that I've loaded up, including my ARC 770 hardware, and go ahead and download our pre-converted Stable Diffusion model intermediate representation format. After doing so, we can go ahead and compile the model on our GPU, define a prompt, and then go ahead and generate the result. And we can see similar results when running the notebook on an Edge GPU with the ARC 770, with our stable diffusion model generating outputs in one to two seconds. Let's now switch over to running Llama 2.0. Llama 2.0 is a popular text generation model licensable from Meta, and here we're going to show some results on the Flex170 discrete GPU, again on our Rhodes platform. Using a similar process, we can go ahead and set up and configure and run an open wiener version of Llama 2.0 that is quantized with intake precision and fits in within about 9 gigabytes of memory. As we can see as part of this demo, we can also directly interact with the Llama model and be able to ask it questions and observe the latency of its responses accordingly. Now, if you want to be able to test your workload on additional Intel hardware, like CPUs and GPUs, you can use performance benchmarking using the Container Playground, built with the Red Hat OpenShift Access with REST APIs. As part of our in-person demo at KubeCon, we'll also take a look at how we can serve stable diffusion for deployment with OpenVINO model server. That concludes our demo. You can find the references to all of the materials that we just shared as part of this demo, including references to the notebooks that we shared, the Rhodes platform, additional performance benchmarking, and the container playground. 
Thank you for your time.